I am Dr. Sunil Kumar S. Patil, Professor and Head, Civil Engineering Department, Walsh Institute of Technology, Solapur. The topic of today's session is design of RCC T beam. The learning outcomes are the learners will be able to design RCC T beam with reference to IS 456 2000 provisions. Let us have general information regarding T beam. T beam, a slab is assumed to act as a compression flange of T beam shall satisfy the following. The slab shall be cast integrally with the web or the web and slab shall be effectively bonded together in any other manner. And the mean reinforcement of the slab is parallel to the beam that is it this happens in case of isolated beams that is the secondary beams. So transfer reinforcement shall be provided as shown in figure number one such reinforcement shall not be less than 60 percent of the main reinforcement at the mid span. So here it is shown. So here you will find this is transverse reinforcement that means whenever you have secondary beam so this problem arises. The transverse reinforcement provided across should be 60 percent of the main reinforcement which we have provided. So in the absence of more accurate determination the effective width of flange may be taken as the following. But in no case greater than the breadth of the web plus half the sum of the clear distances to the adjacent beams on either side. So BF that is breadth of flange is equal to L0 by 6 plus BW plus 6 DF. For isolated beams, isolated beams means it is secondary beam. The effective flange width shall be obtained as below but no greater than in no case greater than the actual width. So BF is equal to L0 divided by L0 by 4 plus 4 plus BW where BF is the effective width of flange, L0 is the distance between zero bending moments in the beam and BW is breadth of web, DF is thickness of flange and B is actual width of flange. For continuous beams the frames or and frames L0 may be assumed as 0.7 times the effective span. For simply supported L0 is equal to L. So let us discuss the design steps of T-beam as per IS 456-2000. Now first of all we have to assume the effective depth D and the breadth of web that is breadth of beam BW. So assumption of effective depth D shall be based on clause number 23.2.1A of IS 456. So basic values of effective span depth ratio given are for cantilever it is 7, for simply supported 20 and continuous it is 26. So based on if it is simply supported we have to take 20 L by D ratio or if it is continuous we are supposed to take 26, if it is cantilever 7. The width of beam BW shall be based on figure number 1 that is minimum dimensions of reinforced concrete members for fire resistance. So minimum is usually is 200 and it should be more than 200, it may be 230, it may be 250, 300, so on and so forth. Find the effective width of the flange. This is as per clause 23.1.2a. So BF is equal to L0 by 6 plus BW plus 6 DF. For isolated beam, BF will be equal to L0 divided by L0 by B plus 4 plus BW. So BF shall not be greater than the breadth of the web plus the half the sum of the clear distances to the adjacent beams on either side. So kindly think and answer. So here I have given as per the provision IS456, the effective width of the flange you have to select from the four options given over there. I feel you already ticked it. The answer will be the B option that is BF is equal to L0 by 6 plus BW plus 6 DF. Now design steps further for T beam will be given the load per meter on T beam including self weight of the slab then the add the weight of rib so BW divided by 1000 that is to convert it into meter 
d minus df that is df is already considered for slab so therefore total d minus df divided by 1000 again to convert it to meter into 1 1 meter into 25 that is density of concrete 25 kilonewton per cubic meter find the design moment mu and shear force vu based on the support condition that means whether it is simply supported whether it is fixed whether it is cantilever based on that you should find out mu and vu determine the longitudinal reinforcement so for determining the longitudinal reinforcement first of all we assume the uniform compression in the flange and neglect the contribution of rib in resisting the moment so we calculate mu limit mu limit is equal to 0.446 fck bfdf into d minus 0.5 df so this d minus 0.5 df this is liver arm and this is 0.446 fck bf into df this is your compression c so if mu is greater than mu limit doubly reinforced section is to be designed if mu is less than mu limit determine the moment of resistance of the flange that is mu1 or mu dash assuming xu is equal to df i assume xu is equal to df and i will first of all find out what is mu dash so mu dash is equal to that means if it is within compression uh, flange so in that particular case it is 0.36 fck bf into df into d minus 0.42 df that is this is liver arm d minus 0.42 df is liver arm and this is compression c so if mu is less than mu limit the neutral axis xu is less than df so find area of steel ast from the relation mu is equal to 8.87 fy ast d into 1 minus ast fy divided by bd fck so this is g point 1.1 b equation now if mu is greater than mu dash but less than mu limit determine mu limit mu double dash the moment of resistance of the beam when xu is equal to 3 by 7 df mu double dash is equal to 0.36 fck bw xu into d minus 0.42 xu this is by considering only the web portion plus 0.446 fck bf minus bw so bf bw is already considered therefore this is 0.446 fck bf minus bw into yf into d minus 0.5 yf this is liver arm if mu is less than mu double dash it is the case of non uniform stress in the flange in such case xu is to be found by trial and error method if xu is less than xu limit then and greater than mu dash mu double dash when it is a case of uniform compression in the flange then xu then find xu by using following equation that is mu is equal to 0.36 fck bxu into d minus 0.42 xu this is liver run for central web portion and then afterwards 0.446 fck bf minus bw that is remaining portion of flange into df into d minus 0.5 df ast can be found by equating tensile force and compression force that is 0.87 fy ast it is tensile force and compression force is 0.36 fck bu into xu bw into xu plus 0.446 fck bf minus bw into df shear reinforcement is designed taking it as a rectangular section of size bw into d the references for this particular presentation are given over here.